We have with us on the call today Mr. Vinod K. Menon, Mr. Tushar Kaveria, and Ms. Swapna Vingulikar from IRB Inventory. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone telephone. I would now request Mr. Menon to give you an overview of the significant development during the quarter. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Good evening to everyone. I'd like to welcome all the investors and analysts on this call. Hope you have reviewed all the detailed numbers as well as the presentation by now. We are extremely pleased to witness and share a sharp recovery in our collections across the project. For the month of September, we have reported a growth on YOI basis as lockdowns were lifted nationwide. In the initial slides 4 to 11, we have charted this out on monthly basis for each project as well as the portfolio as a whole. I would like to draw your attention to the movement of maroon line in the charts, representing monthly day-by-day -day collections. And you would notice that the month of September has seen a growth across all the projects, adding to over 8% YOI growth for the portfolio as a whole. This trend is strengthening, further progressing into October and is expected to continue given the onset of the festive season as well as the recovery seen across the industries. Another very interesting factor to note is the fact that for the quarter as a whole, the robust bounce back has been driven primarily by movement of passenger vehicles resulting in Q2 FY21 collections almost reaching the levels of Q2 FY20. So as commercial traffic also gains momentum in the coming month, we expect H2 to be meaningfully stronger and thus help us regain the lost ground. Relaxation to the smaller mining activities in the state of Rajasthan has resulted in the collections of Jaipur Devli project to grow 10% YOY for the quarter as a whole, even when the lockdown was not fully lifted for the part of the quarter. Coming quarters are expected to be even stronger for the project once the complete ban is lifted by the Honorable Supreme Court. We have received the intimation from NHAI certifying an extension of 460 days for Surat Daita project, which will now end on 25th May 2022 as against the original concession expiry date of 19 February 2021. We thus have a clear visibility for the largest and the meatiest project in our portfolio, adding strength to subsequent cash flows. Overall, on revenue front, we have been pleased to note all these developments as well as the continuing growth trend. On the cost side, we have been able to see reduction in the average interest rate to approximately 7.5% from approximately 8.15% on outstanding loan of approximately 1,500 crores, effecting in a saving of over rupees 9 crore annually. Additionally, we have also availed moratorium as per the RBI circular dated 27th March 2020 and 22nd May 2020, which has supported our cash flows during these difficult times. We have also applied for COVID loan as per NHI circular dated 26 May 2020 in the eligible project SPV, which will further support our cash flow requirements going forward. Considering the extension of concession period notified by the Ministry of Finance, we would likely have nil or zero impact of COVID led shutdown on the NPV of cash flows from the portfolio. With this meaningful bounce back in the collections, we will be distributing rupees 2 per unit for Q2 FY21 and expect further recovery in the coming quarters. I would now request Mr. Tushar Kavedia 
to take you through the final financial performance for the quarter. Over to you, Tushar. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll present the financial analysis for Q2 FY21 versus Q2 FY20. The total consolidated income for quarter ended Q2 FY21 decreased to rupees 296 crores from rupees 301 crores in Q2 FY20. The consolidated toll revenues for quarter ended Q2 FY21 decreased to rupees 288 crores from rupees 293 crores in Q2 FY20. The beta for quarter ended Q5, Q2 FY21 decreased to rupees 239 crores from rupees 243 crores in Q2 FY20. Interest costs, including the interest on premium deferment for quarter ended Q2 FY21 decreased to rupees 37 crores from rupees 42 crores in Q2 FY20. Depreciation for quarter ended Q2 FY21 decreased to rupees 153 crores from rupees 170 crores in Q2 FY20. The pack for quarter ended Q2 FY21 stood at rupees 49 crore as compared to rupees 30 crore in Q2 FY20. Now I request moderator to open the session for question and answer. I request moderator to open the session for question and answers. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Alok Devra from ES Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, congratulations on a strong recovery. Uh, just had a couple of questions. One was uh, that we have seen, you know, revenue being almost largely flat and even EBITDA being flat. However, the uh, payout has been uh, around 20% lower than what we had distributed same period uh, last year. So, uh, any particular reason? Have we sort of uh, kept some for reserve? If you could just throw some light on that. Uh, yes, Alok. Uh, we have uh, basically distributed close to 90% only. Considering uh, the COVID scenario, if the situation improves further, then definitely we can look forward to paying a higher payout in Q3 and Q4, depending upon the situation. Sure. And uh, uh, in the extension which we uh, mentioned about uh, about uh, the 400 plus days which we have received in one of the project, so uh, have we received this three months extension which was primarily due to COVID for the other projects as well? What is the status there? So, yeah, the for the other projects, it is as per the circular, every month we are giving progressively the analysis and the calculations for the period increase uh, based on the uh, lower toll collection. So as, as soon as the, our toll collection reaches beyond 90%, this will, de uh, this will stop this calculation. And the minimum period of 90 days will be awarded to all these projects. Sure. In the, just one last question. So, uh, in the monthly sort of toll collection which you have given, there is a YOY increase in in uh, the last month of the quarter. So, assuming there is a YOY increase in uh, Q, the whole of Q3 as well as in Q4, so do we see the payout moving back towards the three rupee quarterly run rate? If you could just throw some, uh, what what's the outlook there uh, in the near to medium term? Uh, yeah, that's all from my side. Definitely, Alok, uh, if the growth comes back and if we are delivering a 10-11% growth, the payout uh, should be uh, in the earlier level only. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, two questions, sir. Firstly, on this, sir, uh, the uh, of course the the number has been uh, very very good for the September month. 
yeah. How is the, the the traffic behaving in the month of October? And uh, and uh, yeah. and also can you comment on you know the 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 passenger vehicle growth, you know, and and the MCV growth for the October month. So, uh, Mohit, uh, for the month of October, we 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 are just seeing the similar kind of trend what we have seen in September. The passenger vehicle has improved uh, significantly, and that is being continuing even for the month of October. We are also seeing a um, improvement in the commercial uh, numbers also, uh, seeing the festive season around. So uh, <clears throat> the, the the growth is still continuing the way it uh, it showed in the month of September. We can expect a similar run rate, right, compared yeah. to September. Yeah, so it is improving on the commercial front as also uh, because of the festive season. The second is around the major maintenance expenses. Uh, which are the projects lined up in this particular year, and how much you have budgeted, and is it a uh, or are we trying to postpone some of the major maintenance to a 522 given the you know the cash flow situation? So, uh, uh, Mohit, uh, with respect to the major maintenance uh, in FY19 and FY20, we have carried out major maintenance in most of the projects. Only some portion was left out in FY21 uh, and uh, 22, 23. Also, we don't expect any major maintenance uh, in the individual project. Okay, but in, in in the valuation, you know, table which we which we published, I think the Jaipur Deoli and Pathankota Mishra where 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 the some part of major maintenance were supposed to happen in FY21 and FY22. So you are right. What we are seeing is this major maintenance is there for FY21 in two of the projects. The rest Correct. of the five projects, the major maintenance was completed in the last year. It's so Pathankota okay. and JD is continuing for this year as well. And uh, and Jaipur Deoli also. Yeah, Pathankot and Jaipur Deoli. Okay. And sir, something as, uh, as far as extension is concerned, extension or concession is concerned for all the projects, we when will get the complete clarity, you know, uh, for the COVID period? So, I've, uh, I've answered earlier that uh, all these projects, Minimum 90 days is applicable as per the finance ministry circular. So every month we are giving our detailed calculations based on the lower toll collections for the extension. So till this date, none of the projects has crossed 90 days. So minimum of 90 days will be applicable. And we are almost reaching 90% toll uh, collection levels in most of the projects. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vibhor Singhal from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so my uh, question is just on the uh, moratorium that we have taken for uh, uh, the STVs. So uh, which are the STVs or uh, facilities for which we had taken moratorium under the, uh, uh, basically the COVID uh, facility? And how comfortable are we with the cash position, current cash position, uh, in terms of repaying it back at the end of the financial year? So, uh, before I just want to uh, tell you that this moratorium has been taken at the trust level and not at the SPU level. We have the loan only at the trust level. And this moratorium was availed for that particular loan. And for all the SPVs, the loan is from the uh, trust. So, there is no moratorium at trust level. And, uh, yeah, I think some noise is coming. Just to talk about repayment of the market. Yeah, so again, uh, the moratorium which we have availed at the trust level, uh, mm -hmm. wherein the lender has uh, 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 deferred the repayment of that particular moratorium and it will be paid at the end of the uh, uh, tenure of this particular loan as a last installment. And which, uh, when would that be, sir? The end of the loan? Uh, the end period? Probably it's FY30, 33. 33. Okay, so the moratorium is also. Uh, the any payment of the moratorium of has also been extended to beyond FI30. Yeah, that's what is the last installment. It's, it's last, last installment. installment, yeah. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sudhir Bhera from Right Time Consultancy. Please go ahead. Yeah, good. Good afternoon, sir. 
correct me if I am I am wrong. So total cash flow for the half year ended September is around 222 crore distributable cash flow. Yes. Out of which 163 crores is coming from two projects that is IRB, Bangsar uh, Surat, uh, and IDAA. So now the situation is that RB, uh, this Bangsar Surat is getting over by May 22, and IDAA also I think it is getting over by 23. So 70% of the cash flow will go off from our book. So then, how will you manage uh, the things after 22 or maybe 23? That is my first question, sir. Okay. Next. And uh, sir, next question is, uh, uh, see, because of this reason alone, I believe that we have seen massive erosion in our wealth. Actually, see, now today is 37 rupees, so there is a tremendous erosion in the wealth of investors. So I think that is a uh, clarity which is uh, is not coming. So uh, for, for the cash distributable cash flow, that how things will be managed after 23. So if you can throw some light in detail, so how things will be managed after 23, that will be of great help, sir. Uh, so thanks for your question. First of all, uh, on the Surat Daisar and Baru Surat, what you said that it contributes almost 60, 65 percent of the total NDCF. Here we just want to uh, give you some uh, clarification that Surat Daisar project we are comparing the gross toll collection, whereas we, there we have a revenue share of almost 50 percent. So these projects, both of them taken together, for uh, comprises 30 to 35 percent of the total NDCF. That's one thing. And uh, the second thing, uh, what you talked about is the uh, the improvement in the output. So as a strategy. uh we we have this two years left for this particular project both project but between that we have a, we have already planned some acquisitions during this particular period uh, to recoup the uh, um, uh, collections uh, or contribution to the ndcs uh, that is the part of our strategy and we will come back to you on the on any acquisition whenever it reaches to the level uh, of uh, bringing it for the approval to the unit holders just to add so this the so this the uh yeah. when we did the ipo also and even if you look at the valuers uh, valuation report also it is that yeah. every investor was aware aware that this assets will go away in those financial year and in spite of the valuation uh, was going off around 11 12 rupees payout uh, on a per annum basis on a average basis so basically that was resulting in irr of 12% Basically, uh, though the, those these projects will go out, but still uh, on a uh, basically on the current cash flow, we will be uh, if we will not add any asset, there may be a dip once those assets go out. But uh, later on, once the other projects uh, start picking up, then again the payout will goes up to even the twenty five, twenty six rupees in a particular year post uh, FY twenty seven, twenty eight. Uh, so, 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 uh, uh, so uh, the thing is, uh, as we are right that investors were aware, but the projection which are given in the valuation report are way off the mark. So it is a way off the mark. Uh, if you really see the uh, valuation report and if you compare with the actual performance and actual collection, uh, it is way off the mark. And the, hence, uh, market prices are not reflecting the uh, value of the. Uh, What is given in the valuation report, so that's why the, there is a massive erosion of the investors' wealth, sir. Sir, uh, there also I bit differ from your view uh, because uh, we have uh, in last two three presentation we have provided a comparison between our assets with the our adjacent road corridor also. There also we have demonstrated the growth in our asset was comparable or higher than the. Uh, the adjacent uh, road stretch and secondly sir this covid scenario or there were certain other disruption which is beyond yeah, yeah. control sir correct correct that is a unprecedented situation yeah. and sir one more request from my side yeah. if you can give the balance sheet in the annual report of all the spvs that would be very helpful for us okay, okay sir we have noted your request we'll come back yeah. thank you thank you sir thank you thank you 
Ladies and gentlemen, we would request participants to please limit their questions to two per party. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up question. We'll take a next question from the line of Raman Gupta from Wellsburg. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mr. Vinod and Pusha. Yeah, good evening. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, concentrate on only the number, uh, the site 20 and then site 21, which is actually uh, very difficult to understand. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, sorry to interrupt. Sir, if you are on a hands-free mode, can you switch to handset? We're not able to hear yeah. you that clearly, sir. Yeah, I, I want to concentrate on the slide number 20 and 21 of your presentation. Yeah. While uh, uh, FY20 and FY21 numbers are almost uh, similar when it comes to profit and then the cash profit, when it comes to NDCF, there is a major difference. I think the difference is coming from the first uh, row of which is cash flow received from project based previous in the form of interest. Right. So around, around 70 crores, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, does it mean? Does it mean that this is actually uh, due from SPVs and then not received by the trust? I am looking from the trust point of view. Yes, you are right. So this is not actually a loss uh, for the trust, but it's only a deferment of the flows, right? Yes, you are right. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, are we getting any positive effects of uh, our loan moratorium from uh, SBI? Yeah, we have uh, just discussed that uh, they have uh, given us the moratorium and the interest portion will be capitalized and will be paid at the last in the last installment uh, of the loan tenure. And secondly, uh, further the, the rate has also been reduced from 8.15% to close to 7.5% on an average basis. Right. So, I mean, I'm again reiterating, so this is only a postponement of cash flows from the SPVs, but not actually as a loss to the unit holder or the A to the customer. Yes, you are right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Jitain Rushi from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Sir, one question on the uh, ECG, 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 what, 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 which facility? Company? So extended, extended credit uh, guarantee scheme. So there was an ECL uh, on the working 20% uh, on the working capital loan. So have you yeah. that? Mr. Rishi, uh, sorry to interrupt. I think you're on a speaker mode. Please switch to handset. It's kind of muffled. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, yes. yes. It is better. Yeah. It is better. So. No, Mr. Rishi, we, we've lost our audio again. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Rushi. Uh, Mr. Jitain Rushi, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. Um, I think so. I'll ask him to come back in the queue. In the meanwhile, should we move to the next? Uh, hello. Let him continue. Uh, Jitain, uh, we don't have any working capital facility at trust level. Because as such, for the toll business, you don't require any working capital. We have only a 1500 course stub loan where we have taken a moratorium of six months and where Tushar has already explained that the tenure is extended by six months. Yeah, so there is no extended working, so there is no working capital loan additional taken, right sir? What I understand correctly? Yes. Okay, so because I was confused because this monetary interest uh, actually it was supposed to be paid between September to March this year, but as you said with, uh, in the previous question that you will be paying at the end of the tenure, that is the uh, uh, 30th, 2030 or something like that. Yes, that's and what is the agreed with the lender. Correct, 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 correct. And and uh, and sir, uh, any uh, so edit. Also, have we given any monitoring from the trust to the SPV in terms of payment of interest, or if we have, how it works? Like, uh, because if the trust has taken the monitoring, whether the benefit has been passed on to the SPV or we have taken the interest from the SPV. Wherever the cash flow was uh, with the SPV, we have taken uh, interest uh, because SPV do not require moratorium if they have cash flow. Wherever there was a shortfall, to that extent, moratorium is extended. Got it, sir. Got it. And sir, one last question on the extension of, uh, so as you said, uh, uh, every daily traffic, if it is not reaching 90% level, you will get the extension. So this extension can be maximum of 90 days only, right, sir? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
Hi there. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, you know, I had a question from a long-term investor point of view, and I think uh, you know, briefly we alluded to this a short while earlier. Is in terms of your pipeline of projects that have to be added, especially in light of two key projects, uh, you know, going uh, uh, out of our portfolio over the next couple of years. So just you know, uh, mm-hmm. wanted to. Understand and if you can maybe explain further what plans or pipeline do you have in mind or anything that you are currently working on and also what impact that is likely to have one on the NDCF but that also I guess onboarding any new project will have a impact on the debt levels uh, of the trust right uh, um, uh, we will have to uh, leverage more and uh, more debt. Uh, will be added. Uh, is that understanding correct? Yes. So uh, you are right that acquisition will happen through a debt, and plus maybe some initial equity contribution would be required to acquire the assets. So that's the one thing. You are right that uh, it will be the levered assets. Assets will be purchased from there. Now coming to the point where you asked about the acquisition of assets, uh, we have been eva- we are evaluating couple of assets, and those are all operational assets. I mean. Seen some uh, five to six years of uh, operational life, so that's something we are evaluating. And uh, these assets are, have come up to us from directly from the entrepreneur and also from the lender side. So once we reach to a level where these are have reached to a serious, uh, serious discussion at the uh, deal level, that time we will come back to the unit holders for us. Okay, but you are confident that in the next. Uh, 12 to 18 months, we will be adding, uh, uh, you know, at least one, uh, if not more, asset to our portfolio. So yeah, we are definitely confident that before these two assets go, we will add some couple of assets to the trust. Okay. And uh, you know, quick second question. Uh, you know, as far as the NDCF is concerned, uh, you, uh, you mentioned brief while uh, back that you know. Uh, that and can also go up, uh, you know, uh, to previous 12 rupee levels and even beyond that. So, uh, what is the expected time horizon by which you know it will touch the originally anticipated 12 rupees, uh, and then you know uh, what is the likelihood and by when is it likely to go beyond that? So, as you see, that uh, whenever we had given our 12 rupees or uh, projected a 12 rupee kind of payout. There we had made an assumption of 10 to 11 percent kind of revenue growth. So presently, what we are talking is when we reach to that level. Today we are we have reached to 80, 90 percent level of the last year collection. And once we cross that and reach to 110 percent, that time we will be able to distribute 11 to 12 rupees kind of payout. So we we will see once we reach to that level, we'll start making the payouts the way we we, we did in earlier years. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Gagan Vision from Wealth First Finsurf. Please go ahead. Good uh, evening, sir. Yeah, just to put some number into perspective for the NDCF detailing, um, barring uh, your June uh, quarter end, uh, there will be no things are affected due to negatively affected due to COVID. Just wanted to understand one thing for the March uh, quarter end. So basically, the revenues were at par with the uh, quarter-on-quarter movement. Yet uh, we are able to see that there was no uh, receipts from the SPVs towards repayment of the debt. So can you just throw some light uh, on that front? Uh, so Gagan, if you see, uh, first we are trying to pay the interest portion. So once the interest portion is recovered, thereafter the balance amount is utilized for repayment of capital and a uh, repayment of loan. So these loans are repaid uh, on a yearly basis. So once the cash flow is available, that is upstream to the uh, trust uh, against the repayment of the loan. Okay. Yeah. So this, when we say that uh, the repayment happens, it happens on a yearly basis for a particular SPV, as and when cash is available. 
No, okay. I was just contrasting with uh, with the previous quarters, wherein um, on an average the repayment on the debt fund was somewhere around 60 odd crores. So I was just looking at it in the last two quarters, we there were no no repayments uh, on the debt fund. Yeah, because if you see the collections were low, so first the the interest was recovered, and once this interest is recovered, we will uh, start uh, collecting the repayment as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question is uh, basically, do you do you see if at all in future uh, buyback acting as a catalyst for the price correction? We have been this continuously discussing with CB on this front, and uh, uh, we have been representing at all forums as well. So we once we get some uh, clarity from their side, we will let you know the timelines. Okay. Okay. Just last uh, one thing. Any uh, update on the uh, pending arbitration with the NHI? Which arbitration? So last time we had uh, reported an arbitration. Uh, I, I suppose it was an account of mining bank. So it was somewhere upward, uh, approximately around 20 odd crores. So that that was a claim which we filed, uh, which we discussed on the mining bank for the uh, Jaipur Devli project. Right. There, there we discussed last in the last quarter call also that since the project was having its target traffic due in this particular period, the survey was done and we were eligible for the uh, highest uh, uh, or the uh, maximum con extension to the concession period, which was uh, even uh, accepted by the IE also in this representative. So by this. Uh, there, there will be no additional claim uh, will be given because the claim can be given only in the one form which was they have given in the extension. Ah, okay. What the point, sir? Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Sunil Sarga from Systematic Share. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Ah, uh, yeah. So I think one is that I must compliment you on two, three issues because I have been always telling you on certain issues that that should be, you know better handled. So in terms of the that you gave the presentation and result on time, so that anybody if you know you want to analyze, they could analyze. Number one, number two, I think quality of presentation is is is, is better because for a change it's a different uh, this thing, you know. So you don't feel it a monotonous. And third is the interest rates uh, being, you know, uh, coming down from 8.1 or to, you know, that extent to 7.5. So I think three are, you know, highly appreciative. Besides the <clears throat> toll collection, which are already moving to the pre-COVID levels. Uh, my query is basically, if you, uh, you know, your Daiser, uh, Surat Daiser, uh, the valuation when he did a valuation, he took a August and 2022 as a period. Because uh, I think that was the three months, uh, you know, that COVID extension period was considered. So you need to please clarify me on that. Number one, uh, number two, on the uh, fast tag, you know, collection through fast tag. I I read somewhere that the government is planning to make it mandatory, kind of a hundred percent from first January. So I just want to understand the uh, you know update on that, and plus, what is the percentage of the uh, collection that is currently happening? By way of the digital, and third is the compensation uh, which you should have asked for because they gave you extension. Extension is for loss of you know this thing, but if your revenues you completely lost out the revenue, so they should have ideally also done a reimbursement of the expense, not the loan. You know, 25, 26 days you lost plus initially there was a lower collection. So what I understand if there are force measure like this, then there has to be some reimbursement. So are Any claims or are any demands that you raise with the uh, NHA which are still pending? And last query is on the institutional holding. I have been noticing that it's coming down. So what is happening that though it with the large investor it is still 67 percent, but if uh, it uh, holding goes to the institution, it really goes to the uh, you know strong hand. If it comes in the hand of the retail, sometimes you find that as somebody have been you know most of the investor have been raising queries. Ki bhai the Price have been, uh, you know, deteriorating and uh, it's becoming more of a trading kind of a uh, this thing, and people have been losing. So I think, what are your efforts to, you know, go and uh, talk to institution invest to make sure that <clears throat> what is the better product than this, which can offer 15% or 20% when the current interest rate is 5%, 4.5%, any other alternative that they have. So these are my queries. I think if you can kindly respond on this, yeah. Yes, energy is manan. Actually, uh, the first question was on Surat Daiser, right? 
so the uh, quantum of net distributable cash flows for these projects as a percentage of total is close to almost 70% so once these projects are gone and you say that uh, we are going to acquire a new project so that will be through debt only so what sort of impact will it have on the current uh, 0.28 debt equity ratio and uh, what sort of impact can we expect uh, <coughs> on the on the net distributable cash flows given that a significant portion of the pro of the project is gone and the new project that we you say that we are going to acquire if you can give us some sort of timeline as to which quarter can we expect the new project to come and whether will it be a road project only or do we also plan to go into some other area thank you okay thanks ishu uh so your first question on surat daisar and uh, barul surat uh, which i have already answered in earlier also that these projects contributes roughly 35 to 30 to 35 percent uh, to the ndcf because the surat daisar project has a revenue share con uh, contribution almost 50 percent of its collection so by reducing that you will see that uh, they contribute 35 to uh, between 30 to 40 percent Secondly, uh, on the uh, NDCF front, uh, how it will improve? Definitely, uh, it will come down once these projects are out. But gradually, it will improve once the other projects also get matured. So uh, that's the one uh, thing which we have already discussed. That uh, Surat Daisar Baruch Surat goes out, the other projects will mature in couple of years, and then we will come back to the same level of distribution what we had seen earlier. Now, as a strategy, when you say that what will, uh, what is our target to acquire assets, we have been continuously uh, evaluating uh, assets, uh, operational assets. Now, uh, since last couple of weeks, uh, we we have been receiving a lot of uh, requests from the uh, uh, lender side also uh, to for, for such opportunities. So we have we are evaluating those assets, and as a target, definitely we we will try our best to acquire a couple of assets. Uh, before these assets goes out. Uh, no, but if you can give some uh, impact on, I mean, you will be uh, raising more debt. So what sort of impact will it have on the current debt equity ratio? And if you can give us some timeline as to when will such an acquisition actually come into play? Okay. So when you say we will be acquiring the asset uh, through debt, definitely uh, an acquisition with a debt which which we which we can borrow at a very quite attractive rate or a low rate today being AAA rated fund. So so by that count the debt will be that cost would be lower and the IRR for which we are looking is in the range of uh, 13 to 14 percent uh, uh, of uh, uh, returns on the project. So, uh, if you see, there will be clear arbitrage of uh, five, five to six, uh, 500 to 600 bips uh, uh, to, to to give an upside uh, as a payout to the unit holders. So that's that's something which we are um, uh, considering as a as a benchmark or as an assumption for uh, acquiring any asset. Uh, so that will be our strategy to acquire new asset. No, but uh, regarding the timeline by what's, what quarter we can expect that uh, such an asset will actually come into our portfolio? Uh, sir, uh, we are evaluating the asset and we expect that within a year we will add the asset to the invest and anyway we will be buying the operational asset. So those will not have any bearing on the rating of the asset. This is what we believe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vijal Bakai from Amit Jasani Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, nice to hear you all. Uh, what I wanted to know was what is happening for the heavy bank uh, that we wanted to initiate and have we got further on that? That is one. Second, why are we not able to actually go on a roadshow and attract secondary market buyers for our unit? I mean, the existing unit holders have suffered massive losses. Can't we just look at that where uh, you can get some institutional holders to buy? Because I don't think the yield is a problem. The future seems, you know, uncertain in terms of because the price is down, even at these attractive yields, people are not ready to believe that uh, the price can come up. So yeah. I think it needs a serious amount of 
uh, soul searching from the management team that how can we have something that is yielding 10% 12% plus we are returning capital also and destroying so much value quarter on quarter i mean it is unbelievable i mean it's a shameful thing i mean i don't know whether you all even realize it how much money you all have destroyed people and why are you not doing it i mean what is stopping us from actually going on a road show and presenting ourselves as a good yield uh, a good yield uh, returning asset so are you complete with your questions yes okay so i'll answer your two questions first is on the buyback which we have discussed that we have already representing cb for uh, at various forums on this particular aspect of buyback guidelines we are awaiting their response they are also taking their own time to evaluate because this will be very new for a trust or a, a regular uh, in which to have buyback uh, uh, regulation so they are taking their time and once we get a, a confirmation or or they they are uh, coming out with this guidelines we will update you on the same and we will try to use that particular way of uh, 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 distribution uh, as a part of our strategy in, against our capital uh, reduction second you talked about the road shows uh, uh, we have been uh, in discussion with various investors uh, quite long time uh, the, uh, today uh, if you see the institutional investors are almost 65 to 70% so by, uh, by Uh, as a road show suggestion we are in continuous touch with all the uh, institutional investors or the large investors even on the retail side uh, we, have, we have been uh, discussing on the uh, opportunities available today so once once that uh, 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 the, once we reach to a level that uh, they are confident about and they will start, uh, look uh, for, as an opportunity so that's something we have been doing uh, since long and uh, this is not something very new for us uh, thirdly you said about uh, the, uh, the the dip in the price uh, that's the market perception uh, we can't comment on the dip on the price however if, if you see the distribution we have not uh, missed out any distributions and have been doing as per the expectations Uh, uh the the dip, uh, there are various external factors or exceptional factors which affect our progress uh and uh, we have been updating that as well to the investors so uh, uh, that's all on the pricing part which we can comment thank you we'll take a next question from the line of mohit kumar from idfc securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity once again uh, so my question is on traffic once again so i am trying to figure out whether the whether collection has improved month on month from september to october and have you seen the mcv you know the the the, the multi axle vehicle traffic uh, moving up from september because i believe that it was it was still bad in uh, especially in uh, our bharat our, our uh, surat dahi sir and bharvish uh, surat project that's the first question uh, mohit with respect to the uh, multi axle vehicle if we look at the category we may not have seen a significant